Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 151, uh, we'll take a look at software architecture roles and titles. Uh, you can get a listing of all of my lessons in Software Architecture Monday from my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons, and here you can view them and get also additional information links uh, from the videos. A lot of the material does come from these two books that I wrote with Neil Ford, Fundamentals of Architecture and also Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Now, today, I really wanted to talk about those architecture roles and titles, a question I get so frequently that I decided to finally do a lesson on this because there are a lot of different kinds of roles of an architect, different roles and different titles uh, that I've seen in the industry. All of these that you're seeing here are common titles and roles of a software architect. The problem is, what do all these roles do and how do they differ from each other? Oh, what's the difference between an application architect and a solution architect? That's one of the more common questions I get. What does an enterprise architect do and how does that differ from a domain architect? And these are some of the things I kind of wanted to talk about in this session. But here's what I'm going to do. In order to kind of see how each of these roles differ from each other, I want to actually show them across two different access points. The first is the general focus. In other words, is the focus of that architecture role or title a more technical in nature, or is it more business related? In other words, uh, more of a focus on the business and collaboration uh, with business stakeholders uh, rather than, let's say, development teams. Okay, so that's the first access point. Uh, the second is kind of the uh, scope, I guess I would say. So it's focus and then scope. In other words, single application focus uh, going all the way to uh, multi-system focus, even uh, maybe across a division or even the whole organization. So let's do a mapping of where these different roles kind of fit within these access points of focus and scope. So let's start with the classic kind of roles because back in the day there were three basic roles of a software architect application architect integration architect and enterprise architect uh, but of late uh, there are well eight to ten other common titles uh, so let's start with those ones and specifically uh, the traditional and classic title or role as application architect and the application architect sits right about here the focus is usually on one or two systems and so they're scoped not to the whole enterprise, but really just to specific systems um, with some uh, need for interaction with the business. And so that's kind of why I placed it um, more of a technical focus. And you'll see why uh, that is, but, but some business focus. Uh, then we have the integration architect. This used to be a very common title, um, I'll say back in the day. Um, I still see it around sometimes actually. And the integration architect uh, fits right about here. Uh, it's about the same level of uh, business interaction and business focus of an application architect, but is generally multi-system, uh, concerned about the integration of multiple systems as opposed to the actual functionality and technical nature of each individual system. And that's the traditional role of an integration architect. Uh, the third traditional role was that of the enterprise architect. The enterprise architect sits right in this corner here. And notice um, a heavy focus on business and also multi-system. You see, a, a enterprise architect uh, really works with the business uh, that once an initiative is identified, a business initiative, uh, the enterprise architect um, basically generates roadmaps and also identifies what changes are needed across the enterprise uh, to um, address or solve that initiative. And so that's up at the far right-hand corner. Now let's take a look at some of the more uh, common non-traditional roles. And the first of those is the role of technical architect. I'm not crazy about this title or role, um, but really technical architects are those that really place a focus on one particular platform or technology. 
And so the technical depth of a technical architect is much more than an application architect. And hence, uh, they fit right around here, as you can see. Um, heavy, heavy focus on technology and usually just a small scope of systems, maybe one, two, or three kinds of systems. These kind of architects generally float around different projects. Because of their technical expertise, they're used in a variety of projects to solve particularly hard problems, technical problems. Then we have the infrastructure architect. Um, I've run across a lot of architects that are like network architects, but of late, um, it's generalized in terms of the overall infrastructure. And that is a highly technical role that usually spans multiple systems. And so that's kind of way over on the right-hand side, just like an enterprise architect, but deals with the technical infrastructure of our systems. Uh, again, multi-system. And then a term that I saw appear, or a title I saw appear, um, maybe about, I don't know, five or six years ago, and that's the uh, cloud architect. Um, having trouble defining a cloud architect, but uh, basically this is a, also a very technical role. Um, having expertise in various cloud technologies, cloud services, again, to assist and guide development teams technically. And hence, uh, those architects sit right kind of in the middle um, heavy technical focus, um, but is generally multi-system, but uh, not across the enterprise, uh, generally within, uh, scoped within a particular domain, uh, let's say, or a group or class of applications that are uh, cloud enabled. Now we have three of the hardest ones to define, and that is data architect. Now, a data architect focuses on the data aspects of our systems and the data modeling that occurs. Uh, these kind of architects are also used to help determine what kind of database is most appropriate for my system. Uh, these are generally multi-system. This is a generally a multi-system role. And because a lot of that modeling of data has to do with business uh, focus, um, this sits right about in the middle. Uh, this role uh, between having a business focus and a technical focus. Um, data architects generally have to understand and know uh, the business, the domain. And that's where I kind of put it right in the middle uh, between business and technology. Now, a domain architect has also uh, come to rise about maybe five or six years ago. Uh, once more companies are starting to embrace and a leverage domain-driven design, especially to define uh, the structure of their organization. And domain architects generally uh, are responsible for a particular domain. Uh, as such, they have to understand that business area of the domain. So there's a pretty high business focus uh, within a domain architect. Not quite as much as an enterprise architect. So it still has that technical focus, but more so a little bit more business focus. And notice also multi-system. Generally, all the systems within a particular domain or maybe multiple domains. And that leaves the solution architect. <laughs> I am not even going to try to attempt to define the solution architect. Uh, but solution architects are generally called upon as a role or title uh, to take a business problem and find a solution for it. And as such, um, I like to put them right in the middle of these two access points. There's a technical focus, certainly, of a solution architect, but also interaction with the business. So it sits right about in the middle. Also, solution architects uh, generally work on multiple systems to solve a particular problem. Uh, not always, and I struggle with moving this a little more over to uh, one or two kinds of systems, but I like that solution architect right in the middle here. <laughs> and so, so these, these kind of show a, a relationship and help try to identify uh, the responsibilities and the role and also the focus and the scope of these different architecture titles and roles. So uh, this has been lesson 151, uh, just kind of musing about software architecture roles and titles. Uh, maybe I'll be brave enough in a future lesson to actually dive into a couple of those and uh, really talk about the role in detail. It'd be difficult, 
because again, it does vary a lot company to company given a particular title or role. But hopefully with the addition of uh, other kinds of lessons I've done on what it takes to become a software architect and what it means to be a software architect, we can combine all these lessons to really get a good understanding of those roles and titles. So thank you so much for listening and stay tuned for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.